Welcome back to Cheche. What will the general election of August 2017 be known for? What will decide the outcome of these polls for you? We've been discussing that this morning with columnist Masharia Gaido. He's had a long and illustrious career with the Nation Media Group. Uh, and development activist Joseph Kwaka of Community Aid International, who himself has a background in the media. And so I'll invite us all to turn the spotlight on ourselves. Um, as um, media uh, practitioners, but first, Kenya captures the attention of the world for lots of things, our athletics, our tourism, but also, unfortunately, our elections. Why can't we be like these other countries that um, hold elections quietly and nobody knows you know, who the president is? Kenya is not just any other country. Our geographical positioning determines a lot as far as international relations are concerned with other countries. We produce uh, commodities that are in dire, I mean, th there is dire need for in the international market. And so, uh, and of course, we can't rule out the vibrance in our media. How do we spew out what is happening within? So we could as well be our own enemies to that extent. So Sharia? You know, you know we in Kenya we are still stuck in this mindset that the presidency is it's about everything. our turn to wait. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it becomes a, 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 a do-or-die do situation. And yet, you can look at so many countries. Who cares who is the president of Switzerland? I would challenge one Kenyan to tell me who is the president of Switzerland. It doesn't matter who is president, because they have systems that work. In Kenya, systems don't work. It is the president who works and decides how resources will be allocated and how much he will steal. And people become come to believe that you will only prosper if you are in politics, if you are in leadership, or if you are tribesman as a president. But, 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 but it's a fact. Mm. When we involved, we involved corruption. How many governors of the 47 who are not super rich now uh, hopping around with the code? It, it goes across the board. Look at our MPs. They're the highest paid in the world. What, what about even, even MCA? Today, mm. uh, apart from that, the uh, fact that uh, the salaries and remuneration commission has reduced salary. But not, salary. not by much, not by not, enough. Not by much. Mm. Everybody no, wants to be, a, everybody want to be mm. an MCA. No, not many people used to want to be councillors in the, in the local government of yesteryear. Today, every villager wants to be an MCA. Why? Because there is money. And, and, and because when you have that position, like Macharia says, you make things work. Yeah. To, to me, when, when we say that, uh, when Masharia says that um, Kenyans still believe that uh, when your person from your tribe becomes president, that's when you, can, you, you have the opportunity to eat. I think that's, that's not foolish. I think that is out of uh, observation. That's, that's reality. Uh, that, and, and unfortunately, it is a reality that has been brought down uh, to, to, for us to bear with uh, by, by the people who have been in power all along in this country. Um, if only they were not... Um, uh, appointing their tribesmen and women in key positions almost exclusively. Like uh, everybody criticizes that this government is a government of two tribes and, and that's a reality. And so when Kenyans see it as uh, something that they, they have to focus on and say, Kumbe, really it is just uh, only when your person is in, in, in power that's when you can eat. That's, that, that's an observation. That's, that's reality. And, and I wish we could turn our back to that in a few years and become a nation. And it, why is it not in Tanzania? Why even Tanzanians are really telling us, we wish you a peaceful election, we wish you a, peace, a peaceful election, as if uh, we are known not to have peaceful election. And indeed, we don't, we, we don't have peaceful elections. In the last two elections, we've not had it peacefully. So people must be worried as a matter of reality that that's what they have observed about Kenya. So it, then what is our yeah. role as a media in determining the outcome of this election? I think really it's about uh, uh, reporting events truthfully, objectively, accurately, and with some moderation. How have we done so far? I think we've done the best uh, we can. I have heard some people suggest that we should black out all these politicians, <laughs> but I don't think that is only sweeping our dirt under the carpet. Under the carpet. I think what we need to do is expose the outrageous things they do and hope that Kenyans will sooner or later begin to realize this. Are these the kind of people we need in, 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 in leadership? But Macharia, we cannot uh, fail. But there's a lot that happens out there that we don't... We we cannot, uh, we'll see, there, uh, there's a lot of moderation that goes on. There's a lot of evil that is spewed out in, from the mouth of politicians mm -hmm. that we do not uh, broadcast or publish.
to me, I, I, I see how the media in this country has restrained from what happens in the U.S. or U.K., for instance, that a particular media house can decide that they are endorsing a particular candidate. And that, that has not been taking place here, at least. Uh, maybe it will take place in the future, but so, so far so good, because it can bring a problem. But having said that, I think our media is not uh, coming out strongly enough to condemn, to steer uh, the way politicians should conduct themselves in public. For instance, when they throw insults, I think somebody needs to comment I think somebody needs to condemn in a column, in a di an editorial. Masheri uh, does that all the time. Masheri does that, that. But I, thi but I think <laughs> we are not doing that enough. Mm -hmm. So there is more entertainment coming on it, and people are just consuming the, 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 the garbage from the politicians. I think the media needs to come out strongly on that. And maybe give a blackout when there is an insult, uh, somebody is spewing out. Maybe, maybe the media, especially TV, maybe they should not show that. I think so that's the objective aspect that Macharia is talking yeah, about. And, yeah, and uh, yeah. even as we talk about that, I would say the media would really love to do the right thing. Be objective, be truthful, be uh, honest and all the rest. But I think there's a lot of influence, the money influence, in, in how the media works today. Yeah, but what about being... I've seen a, a group called uh, Media Stakeholders in the, the, the social media mm -hmm. talking about bias. How objective is our media. I don't know whether you want to categorize, in particular radios. There are many radios now owned by politicians. Mm -hmm. There are many television stations owned by politicians. Mm. How independent or fair and balanced is our media? But added to that is that the media is just composed of individuals, people. Yeah. Yeah. People, people who, are in the, who are schooled in the culture of this country that if, if, if uh, Mr. Odiambo gives me some money I can, I can write in his favor, I can, I can, I can clip a program on, in his favor. So we, we are still Kenyans operating in, in that culture that has been almost, I think, uh, created by politicians. And I think we have to take a deliberate effort as, as media people to also break out of that. Tell me, are we being easy on ourselves as media people? Because it, it, it seems that, um, you know, we're expecting and understanding the best um, of our intentions, but um, uh, judging the politicians and everyone else by the um. worst. Of I, their actions. Um, I think we do have some, some issues uh, w which we cannot run away from within the media. Uh, leave alone the outlets that may be owned by politicians because these ones are obviously owned as yeah. political yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. tools. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you call what we call the independent media? Mm -hmm. I think uh, there's a lot we can do better. Uh, when we see the public uh, accusing us of being biased or being in the pockets of politicians, we cannot outrightly deny. We do have to interrogate ourselves, look within ourselves and see... So would you say are that we, we are, are foolish are we, are we, are we, uh, Yeah, if necessary, yes. For instance, there is this issue of brown envelope uh, uh, journalism. Uh, uh, journalism. We are trying to fight it, but I can tell you uh, it's, it, it's becoming entrenched. Mm -hmm. I used to think it's only a problem in Tanzania or Nigeria, yes, but I think it is a big issue here. But beyond the brown envelope journalism, which affects the, the reporter on the beat, mm. it goes all the way up. Because you're going to have, you're, you're going to have, you're going to have uh, editors or even media owners who may want to push things in a certain political direction. You also will have them, those who will think that the balance sheet is more important than the news. Yeah. Therefore, they will allow the big advertisers to dictate events mm. and to bully editorial. That is happening, and I think we cannot deny it is happening in all of our media houses. And it is a big, it is probably, uh, today, it is more of a danger to media freedom than government interference. Not only that, media uh, executives succumb mm. to the pressure, to mm. pressure from the directors, mm -hmm. to the extent that um, stories will be used or not used depends on who is advertising. There are certain companies, uh, I don't want to name them, be corporate. I remember at one time we wrote about one when I was in this company and uh, it was hot because the, the rest of the pool advertised. That Actually they did threaten, they did pull. Well, okay. You see, mm. That, and, and again, editors, mm -hmm. in, 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 long time ago, an editor-in-chief was an editor-in-chief, George Kivi, George Bugus, they were editors in chief. They were not listening to politicians, mm. to, to, the, to the executives, mm -hmm. and they decided on editorial matters 
independently without the push from the uh, commercial side. Mutegi uh, uh, and Masharia, mm -hmm. and to some extent Joseph, although I don't know your background, and Charles, but Mutegi and Masharia primarily, you have been you have both long histories in the media and you remember the role that the media played um, in the um, seismic moments of this country's political history. Mutegi, you sometimes regale us with some of your stories of having to thwart you know, politicians. At what point did we lose that? You see... At what point did we get to the point where the public are so disenchanted with the media? I think the main thing is, 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 is the bottom line. Is, is, what will serve? Mm -hmm. what, what will serve? That what when when go to an editorial meeting uh, at four o'clock, deciding which angle to write. What will serve is the main thing. What will serve? Uh, you what know, will what attract what eyeballs? Yes. The, what will the, people the, click the, on? The other thing. The other thing is this. There was a time the media was united for a common cause. Yeah. Okay. We all had one enemy, which was dictatorship, yeah. and and the single party state. Once a single party state was out of the way, there was no common enemy. There was no common it cause. It time for the media to eat? No, not necessarily. I am saying, in terms of pushing an agenda, we saw what you might call the, 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 the confluence of political interests. Today, there is not much difference between Jubilee and NASA. It is simply two political blocks mm -hmm. contending for power. None claims a higher moral mm -hmm. authority. The media then cannot choose between the two, as it did in the, in the single party days. The same thing hit civil society. Civil society was, was swallowed up by politics. And today it is not the civil society which pushed the fight for change in the 90s. It's completely different. So things have changed. I, I, I and, and the, for me, I always say, if we can mature in our politics to a, a point where we, as the media, can comfortably endorse a candidate. a, a candidates mm. or parties, then that will be the day we can say we have reached. Before that, we are still a very backward democracy. I can, I, maybe I'm the only one who can speak for both for uh -huh. both uh, the media and the civil society. Uh, but let me talk about civil society first. Civil society has played a big role in this country, Masharia, if, if, you, if you don't mind. I have uh, not you know that. that. I'm not doubting you that. You see, the, mm. the, rem the removal of, of, of the Kano regime is mostly, largely attributed to the work of the civil society. Okay. Through the yeah. media. And, and out of the media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily really through the media. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah no, this, we, this we must give credit where it is. I mean, yeah. to the extent that some of the uh, some of politicians like Shakombo, I remember telling us after after removal of, of Kanu, that uh, you people, you played your role, go easy a little bit, uh, please. The best civic education can, can go easy a little bit. But let me just say this. Um, uh, civil society is, has diversified the way it works. And so we should not expect civil society of yesteryear that only had uh, one mainstream area of uh, going to the streets and demonstrating and so on. Today, there are so many cases taken to court by the civil society. So public interest litigation is another strategy that the civil society uses a lot more than it used to use it before. And uh, we are publishing, we are writing books. I mean, what we are doing for social vetting and social audit, for instance, is something that we have extracted from a book that we have engulfed a lot of people, people like Barak Muluka, Piela Lumumba, and we've written, we've published a book uh, titled uh, Challenging the Rulers, a Leadership Model for Good Governance. And so I'm talking about the diversity uh, that has been adopted by the, by the civil society. And, and it is, uh, when, when you don't see us on the street, you see us in court. Mm -hmm. When you don't see us in court, you see us in books, and you see us in materials yeah, that we, we produce. But, also but we are also coming to the media that we never used to come a lot before. The media has also presented us with a big platform, now we come. I'm but, here, but, but because but we have also mm -hmm. problems in the civil society. We have many of you who are in briefcase, who just write proposals, and uh, take the money, and uh, end of story. Oh, let me say this, mm -hmm. <laughs> Motegi. Now, um, the one thing that I think also should not be forgotten is that after um, when the regime changed, uh, the donors also took back their money. And what is happening in the world is also important to take note of, that uh, uh, countries like America, like USA and, and, and many countries in Europe, the Scandinavian countries, 
are no longer giving the civil society as much money as they used to give because their, their economies back home are also suffering. So there is a way that uh, they are not voting out in their budget a lot of money to go to the foreign aid. And, um, but but coming, to your point, that, yeah. coming to your point, coming to your point, about um, you, you are saying that Prefer a lot of a lot of uh, civil society organizations. I mean, in every sector, in every industry, in a civil society, it's an industry. It is a sector, and you will find uh, rotten eggs, and you will find good people who are doing good work. I can't deny that, that there are some people who are uh, who are pretentious, who are not genuine, who are not authentic in what they are doing. Mm -hmm. But largely, the civil society, I think, is making a great contribution. And I only wish the civil society could have a good, proper partnership with the media. So we are blaming the media, but the media is also blaming the civil society. But I think a time has come when uh, that should happen, a, a strong partnership so that it can be another, maybe the fifth estate that can produce change in this country. From okay. this discourse, yeah. uh, Udwa, I'm, I'm wondering whether the media and the civil society would play a role in the outcome of this. Well, event. that's the question that mm -hmm. we have been um, addressing this morning. But this is what our viewers are saying about that. Um, Hi, Chacha. All along, the media has sugarcoated the issues that cause violence in our country. What causes violence is a skewed distribution of resources, and that is why it is difficult to accept the outcome if it does not favor your region, because it means that for five years, your region is out. Again, on the media, the media, please paint someone the exact color they are, um, and they go on to list various um, politicians whose names I will not mention. Um, uh, it's the media's responsibility to reveal um, this, uh, these accusations to the public without fear. Instead, you cover their campaigns and even laugh with them during uh, interviews. Our foolishness starts right from the media. So now somebody um, um, uh, no. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, we are coming in for uh, a lot of criticism uh, uh, within the media. And so, Charles, the point you are making about um, civil society and the media, can we, do, does this panel agree that they um, uh, would determine, play a role in the outcome of this election? I, I am in the media and sadly our ratings have been going down in the public eye because of uh, the loss of confidence. And what would answer that, uh, what would justify that is a question that a senior executive in one of the media companies asked some time back. Are we in the media business or the business of the media? Are we in this industry to make money? Or are we in this industry to give information, to play our role as a fourth estate? I think that is what determines everything. Um, the media can very easily partner with civil society in the pursuit of a better society. We're winding up now. Okay. But if it comes to an issue of choosing between politician A and politician B, it becomes very difficult. Because none of those two politicians are any better. I, uh, are any better than the other. No, you've got to do better than that, Masharia, because um, it seems, from what I'm seeing and hearing, mm -hmm. that um, there is a crisis of confidence. Uh, the media has lost the confidence of the public. We're going into an election. Um, can we afford to go into an election as a fourth estate with people not trusting us? We need to do a lot to, get to regain. Um, that confidence, that trust. But what I am saying is, and, and what I said is, we can work towards a better society, but not work towards uh, a partisan political position. Thank you, Mutegi. What is the issue? Whether the media can work with civil society, or whether, the media, or um, whether the media can 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 will help in determine to, yes. to, to some extent, uh, because people are watching. In fact, in fact uh, if you look at that debate which was there, a lot of people watched that, and I hope they on, 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 on Monday next week, they will come and w all of us see them. It is very important because people are watching TV, they are listening to radio, they are reading newspapers. Although newspaper circulation has gone down, down. But the media really plays a major role. You cannot ignore them. It plays a role, but what people are saying and what w this panel has also said is that money um, has influenced uh, the work that we do. Uh, to your point, are we in the, m the, the media, business, media business or business of the media? Business of media. True. When it comes to corruption, it is it is, it depends on how the staff is managed. The nation, for instance, has published an, uh, uh, advertisements talking about brown envelopes. When I was an editor, and if I suspected that you are in 
in the pocket of certain politician I will pull you out immediately mm -hmm. and chuck you to some other place which you will never know anything it's the managers of the media houses they should detect and see where there is corruption and stop it mm. not that uh, corruption is only among the media it's all over the place mm. but we should not particularly and I detest to hear people saying oh they have poorly paid that's why they are taking corruption policemen who used to be take corruption when they were very poorly paid today policemen are more corrupt than before despite the fact that they get a lot of money so salary is not the issue. Just a few final, your final thoughts. Yeah, um, um, I think that the media can play a role, and it's playing a big role. It's going to will be one of the uh, sectors determining the, outside, the outcome of this election because they're highlighting issues. Even the, the public debate for the president that are, the media is organizing, that is mainly the media behind it. And uh, together with the civil society, let me just say that uh, the civil society perhaps leads the media in being more innovative in the way it approaches things. I mean, when it's studied that situation, it comes out like now we've come out with a mechanism of, um, of uh, social, audit, social vetting and social audit. Um, and we are telling the public that social vetting is not something new. When we are gossiping over a cup of tea, wherever we are, or, or discussing politics, we are, we are actually vetting some of these leaders. It's just that we have structured it so that people can have a proper platform and, plug, and, plug, and, uh, and, and take part in it. And we are inviting um, the public that really take advantage of this and, uh, and run with it and make use of it so that you can vet your leaders, select before you elect. That's what I can say. Thank you. So that's all we have time for uh, this morning. <coughs> uh, today's guests were Nation uh, newspaper columnist Masharia Gaido and development activist Joseph Kwaka of Community Aid International. We thank you for your time and your insights this morning. We also thank our panelists for taking Jao and Charles Ogiambo. My name is Udwa Kamimo. Thank you for watching and engaging with us here on Chacha. We'll see you next week.